Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable day. Uh, I contemplated whether or not I was going to do this live or not, and I decided that I wanted to kind of sit back and uh, take my time with it uh, and do it. And so I'm going to record it, do a little post-production uh, and put it up. Uh, I'm not going to be long, but I want to talk about something that I'm passionate about. I want to use some current events to sort of make my point. And uh, it's something, uh, like I said, I'm extremely passionate about. So I'm going to try to move through it uh, as calmly as I possibly can so that my point is clear. Um, we just experienced a situation where everyone's making a real big issue uh, for a lot of different reasons. Everybody has an agenda. That's something that we as a people need to understand, that everybody has an agenda. And we just experienced something with this whole Boston Celtics, Ima, uh, Udoka, uh, Neil Long, and all the stuff that's starting to come out about that situation. And it tends to get uglier and uglier by the day. Um, before I get into that, please remember that we are in the middle of a fundraiser. If you believe in the work that I've done over the years from research to program development to lectures to teaching to the people I actually engage and help on a regular basis, uh, show some love and support for the work I've done, the work I'm doing, and the work I will continue to do. The link is in the description box. Um, okay. Um, there's so much going on here. So I want to set a premise uh, so that it serves for the foundation of what I'm trying to talk about. So you know where I'm going with this thing and determine whether or not you want to go on this ride with me. Um, it is my belief and observation over studies in human behavior, studies in genetics, studies in relationships and history and so much more. It is my belief that uh, both male and female uh, are genetically predisposed to perform certain functions of love towards the opposite sex. So that means that men are born with a blueprint on how to love a woman. Uh, in this instance and in, in situation, we're talking about black men loving black women specifically. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't understand that, I'm not here to explain it now. This is specifically about black love. Now, it applies across the board, but there's a uniqueness that applies here and, and a reason that we need to focus specifically here on black love, black connectivity, black appreciation, and, and so much more. So when you look and you study and you look, even outside the human species, you look and you find out that there's this natural genetic code built in on what males do, what females do. And um, uh, with great uh, consistency, all species perform these duties. We find problems within the human species because there's so many different things that are we allow to interfere and affect us and it has to do with our high level of intellect the problem is with that that sometimes we get them in our way of what we're naturally designed to do sometimes we outthink our survival sometimes we outthink our performance sometimes we outthink our destinies and we allow ourselves to think about things outside the box because we want to explore something new we want to do something different we don't want to be held to what is quote unquote traditional so we move outside of the bounds and then experiences change things because as you move outside of the bounds as you start to explore things that are outside the norm of what should be expected, you start to experience things that also negatively impact you based on the consequences of what you chose to do and you have to live with it. So let me let me let me let me take this premise and add something to it. Both male and female of the human species, specifically black males and females, are born genetically predisposed to love one another, to perform the duties of love, protection, nurturing, caring, uh, in, 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 in procreating, and all of these different things. However, the one thing that interferes with that is trauma. When you introduce trauma into the dynamic, you get an entirely uh, different uh, mingling of memories, emotions, experiences, and behaviors that are outside the norm of what you're genetically disposed to do. 
you in a fear, you're in a uh, trepidation, you're in so many other elements and components into behavior. And I'm, I, I don't have time to get into this on a highly psychological or scientific level, but I want to get you to understand that when you have something of that magnitude interfere, it does actually impact you on a genetic level. We learn this by studying epigenetics. When I went out to uh, discover um, and research uh my argument on multi-generational transmission of trauma as a response to so many people saying we are 100 and at that time 120 something years uh removed from slavery and then it was 130 years and, and i'm doing this research and, and i'm talking about it and i'm coming across some of the work done by uh howard stevenson joy de and some others and we're coming to find out that there is specifically issues that come out of the traumatic experience that we call slavery and the traumatic after after uh, math and undercurrent of what still is taking place. And so when I look at traumatic experiences, it dictates that there's an experience, there's a learned behavior, but that's also traumatic responses involved. So in essence, we are on the core level born, but we're also born with tre uh, uh, generational uh, the generational predisposition to be traumatized and be, to be negatively impacted at a higher level than most. Why? Because that genetic predisposition, predisposition can be passed out epigenetically and it makes you more susceptible to being traumatized. So because we come from trauma, we're easily or we're more easier uh, traumatized. That's just at the core level of what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, okay, so in, in doing that, I, I, I discovered uh, I had my first encounter with epigenetics, but I wasn't done because I also wanted to understand uh, the proclivities of young African-American adolescent and young adult men toward violence. What was behind it? Was it simply poverty and crim criminality? Were there other uh, uh, forces behind it and we come to find again there is a big issue but a, gr a great deal of that can be handled out of that came black men lead our rite of passage initiative which is uh, so much more than what people think when you think about a rite of passage a rite of passage is what you, how you socialize and we have a dual responsibility in socializing our youth every parent has to socialize their kid if they want them to be uh, successful in life, if they want them to be social, pro-social in their engagements and the functions and the things that they do in this world, you have to socialize them. What you can do, what you can't do, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Uh, you're beautiful, you're great, you're smart, all those things. We have to racially socialize our youth. Why? Because the moment they leave the protection of our home after three or four years and five, maybe the fifth year they go off into a public school system, they're going to immediately be exposed to some ideas that are diametrically opposed to what they've been told. The, uh, the Eurocentric idea of what's beautiful is going to be different than what they look like. They've been told they've been be they've been told they're beautiful. They've been told they're gorgeous. They've been told they're handsome. But all of a sudden, their hair is unacceptable. Their hair is not beautiful. Their facial features is not beautiful. Their nose is too wide. Uh, their complexion is too dark, and all of these other things that uh, s supposedly. Uh, constitute beauty don't align with who they are and so they start to question themselves but you have to racially socialize them they have to know deep down inside who they are what their responsibilities are what their place in this world is and they have to know it with great certainty because they're going to go out into this world that's inherently hostile towards them and be expected to perform be expected to win be expected to succeed but what happens is so often they go out packing the backpack of trauma. They go out packing the backpack of an identity crisis. They go out packing a backpack of un, 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 uncertainty about who we are. And so then we get off into this thing. We were, we're saying, well, if the black man is genetically predisposed, uh, genetically engineered, having um, a genetic blueprint that says to love a black woman, what happened? Well, so much has happened in the way of trauma. And this isn't to give an excuse to black men because black women are equally engineered to love black men and to love, we're engineered to love one another. The problem is you got a, a cultural in, in, interferences. You've got uh, social interferences. You got all types of images that are being sent out. Then you got the trauma 
and disruption that comes along. Then you've got poor social learning theory paradigms and models of how you're supposed to behave. See, we're not modeling manhood the way manhood should be actually executed and carried out. We are literally sitting up and creating ideas where young black males are being celebrated and praised for being misogynistic, for being uh, less than honest and being uh, dishonest and even being violent towards young black females. And we see it in the music, we see it in film, we see it in the images that are portrayed. And you're told early on, young, young buck, keep your spare in the trunk. You're told, young buck, I always have you two or three on the side. You're told, young buck, if she's old enough to breed, bleed, she's old enough to breed. you told all these different things that in you, when you look at them and you study them, they are not what we need if we're talking about building strong black men so that we can build strong black families and so that we can have strong black women executing the beauty of their spiritual power prowess in our world in our lives and our society elevating us spiritually while our black men lead us physically we are in a situation that we are failing in because we don't understand how things are working against us and how we are in essence working against ourselves now let's look at this thing with Ima Uduko. So the thing is someone doesn't just appear up and all of a sudden become a serial cheater there are some things that are going on there are some things that are going on in his life there are some things that are going on you got to understand that he's exposed number one into an environment that if your character isn't on point you're going to have a problem having been an athlete and having been in that environment let me tell you something there's not a day that goes by that you don't have someone throwing it at you that's not a day that goes by that there's someone not trying to figure and you don't have to be uh, uh, a hall of fame legend you don't have to be the highest paid player in the league. The fact that you are there uh, puts a target on your back, puts the, puts you in that situation. And if you don't have character, if there's not something instilled in you that this is how a black man carries himself, this is how a black man moves, and this is how a black, that, 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 then there's going to be a problem. And then you add in trauma. And I guarantee you, if I were allowed to get inside the midst of this, I'm gonna find it. It exists. This type of behavior isn't just uh, something that is, is, is infused or comes out of an infusion of social paradigms. This is also a genetic predisposition that has been disrupted and uh, the programming on a genetic level has be re be, been rewritten. I'm telling you the time that I put into uh, studying and understanding epigenetics, I'm telling you that there's a problem and that if we don't deal with the problem, we're going to have an even greater problem. Uh, and in, in the problem that I have divorced from the theme here of the blueprint is the next problem is how easily we are ready to blame the other side without ever looking at ourselves. And that goes on both sides. Both sides have culpability in where we land and where we end up. It, it, both sides have some culpability in it, and yet it's so easy to sit up and say, well, they're doing that. I've already seen brothers doing uh, YouTube programs, blaming Nia Long, bringing up her past. And obviously there are some questions because you go through some things and you do some things and you look up and you've got this history. We all got a history. The thing is, Everybody can't track our history because it wasn't public. But we've all got a history. So my question is, why are we having these types of histories? Why are we having this disruption to our connectivity, to our ability to bond? That could be traced back to slavery. And the, the gen genetic code was being rewritten every time uh, a black man sired a kid and that kid was sold off to keep him from bonding with that kid or the, the woman was sold off or he was sold off to keep him from bonding with his family uh, a genetic code was being written this isn't to make an excuse not at all because we have to have we have a responsibility responsibility to reprogram or we will um, disintegrate as a people we have a responsibility to correct what has been wrong we cannot continue to operate off the current program and expect anything 
exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal to happen for us as a people. We can talk about empowerment until we're blue in the face. We can talk about black group economics until we're blue in the face. We can talk about radical revolutions until we're blue in the face. If we don't fix the, fix the genetic predisposition to get in our own way, to sabotage our own progress, to disrupt things within our, our focal point. If we don't stop destroying relationships that have a chance to work, if we don't stop viewing relationships with uh, vitriol and disregard because we've already made up in my mind our mind that it's not something that's going to have longevity that it's not something that can reduce that we're literally afraid afraid of what it looks like to be bonded with someone long term i'm not talking about being with someone that's mistreating you i'm not talking about being with someone that is harming you in one form or another i'm talking about someone who's literally trying i'm talking about somebody who's trying to find the fit and instead of working to find the fit you're looking for the reason that it doesn't fit and you want to sit up and use that as the reason why you don't have to bond there's a reason for that it doesn't serve you well. It's a form of self-sabotage. I'm telling you once again, when, 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 when healthy, the black male is born with a blueprint, genetic blueprint, to give everything that's necessary to the female counterpart. Same thing with a black woman born with a genetic blueprint on how to merge into and sink into. Now, there's been all these disruptions over the years that we have to be, make an account for. And then what do, what, what do we do about it? We have to say we're going to heal. We have to enter into an environment where we are addressing our trauma. We have to enter into an environment where we're willing to deal with the wrongs that have happened to us. We have to be willing to acknowledge that there are some things that mama passed down to me. There are some things that daddy passed down to me, that their dad and their mom passed down to them. And I have to be the place where it stops. Because what I can tell you is also in studying history, and, uh, and, 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 and I'm not alone in this. You can talk to, uh, uh, you can consult the work of Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. John Heinrich Clark, Dr. Joy DeGruy, uh, Dr. John, uh, Dr. Howard Stevenson, um, Dr. Naeem Agbar, Franz Fanon. You can go down the line. I can tell you this, that if we don't uh, reestablish a strong family uh, uh, value system, we're going to have a problem. You can't do it without it. If we don't reestablish and restructure and re-strengthen the black family, we're going to have a problem. You can't do it without it. The family is the institution through which the proper values of survival and thriving and winning in this world are inculcated into the minds of our young children. If you don't have the proper environment, if you don't have the proper balance of masculine and fem feminine energy in the home, you're going to have problems. You're going to get a, 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 an occasional anomaly where someone comes out of a dysfunctional environment and thrives, but the vast majority are going to fall by the wayside or they're going to become someone who doesn't even uh, achieve a fraction of what their potential suggests they could achieve because they didn't have the right environment. They weren't brought up in a structural environment that inculcated and suppressed and programmed them them who they were, an identity, an understanding, a place in this world, a demand on their destiny that they sit up every day and wake up and thrive and strive towards something that literally will give them that. We are in a situation where we are on a daily basis destroying the future because we are still consistently confident and complacent in living in our dysfunction, in our trauma, in our disruption, in our hatred for one another, in our hatred for ourselves, and we don't see how it's impacting us. We don't see what it's doing to us. As a person who loves my people beyond measure, as a person who loves my family beyond measure, as a person who is striving to be the best black man he can possibly be so that young black boys and young black men can see that it's possible to be something that you can look up to, that others can look up to, that you can strive for, that you can hold your core values of being powerful and loving at the same time in this community, in your family, in your home. We need that. I can tell you by what I've been able to read and gather, and I've been studying it because I want to kind of understand that dynamic and see how it plays out. And what it tells me is that you can't earn your way out of your trauma. One of the first things I'm looking at is I've seen this over and over again in celebrities 
And what I'm telling you is you can't earn, you cannot earn, you can't get to a status where your trauma is no longer impacting you. Matter of fact, if you're not careful, you'll put yourself in a situation as you become more financially fluid that you will be in greater danger because there are more ways to get yourself caught up because of poor decision making directly associated with your traumatic experience. So we still have work to do. That's the first thing I see. The second thing I see is that being financially affluent and then being viewed by the public as in some way being successful gives you a cover to where you don't always have to confront the demon within. You don't always have to confront the things that are going on. You don't always have to look up and say, man, something's wrong because you can hide behind the money. I did that for a long time. Young, black, handsome brother, uh, well put together, got things going on. Hey, everybody's coming at you. Everybody's giving you pats on the back. Everybody's giving you kudos. You don't have to admit you got daddy issues. You don't have to admit you, you got abandonment issues. You don't have to admit that you haven't dealt with a bunch of hurt and pain and abandonment and, 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 and things that happened in your childhood. But what happens is eventually it catches up with you because this thing in life about living is so much more than what you can buy. It's so much more than what you can drive. It's so much more than the clothes you can wear and the places you can go on trips. It's so much more. That's a thing you need to experience that's, that requires human interaction. And in order to have that level of human interaction, you got to be able to trust somebody. You got to be able to trust them at a level that you're going to give a part of yourself to them that if they don't handle it right, you're going to be hurt. But you got to trust it. Why? Because it's so necessary to build the type of bonds that are going to be required for you to rear children in a safe environment. And we aren't doing it. Hmm. We've got work to do. We have work to do. We can talk about this Ima Adoka uh Neil Long thing all day. And we we gotta realize is that the story is getting wilder, that there are more women, that some of the women may have been pregnant and that he has been putting pressure on them to get abortions and all. He's gone completely wild. And so the idea that you can get a certain a woman with a certain status, a, a woman with this and that's gonna no. See, cheating isn't about who you have. It's about your character. And if your character isn't, isn't underwritten by a strong integrity, which is your strength of character, when put in certain situations, you're going to fall. You're going to fail because you simply don't have the strength and the char uh, character fortitude to withstand the temptation. See, character is just the set of values. The integrity is the strength of that character to withstand testing times. And you really don't know just how anchored you are in your values until you've been tested. So we have a lot of work to do. I've been saying that for I don't know how long. Uh, we keep taking it lightly. We keep sitting on it. We keep pretending that everything is okay. We keep thinking that if we don't talk about it, it's going to go away. Uh, the elephant in the room is growing. That big lump underneath the uh, rug that we keep sweeping out of the, the crap has become a big, big lump. And we tripping over it constantly. It's time for us to deal with these issues. It's time for us to get behind programs. Uh, it's time for us to personally, each and every one of us, uh, take take a look into our lives and see how we may be harming ourselves, how we may be harming others. Uh, it's time for us to look at ways to be a part of this. If you're pro-black, then there's a responsibility. If you're individualized in your mindset, you're not going to understand what I'm saying anyway because it's about you. But if you are really, truly pro-black, if this thing is bigger than you, if it's about something you love, if you want to see the future of our race thrive beyond you, your time, then you really need to start looking at ways to be a part of the solution and not simply sit back. Because even if you are not negatively harming anyone and you're sitting back and there's something you can be doing, you're still contributing to the problem. There's no place for neutrality in this battle for survival. We need everybody on deck. 
I hope that I'm making this as clear as I possibly can. Look, I'm going to get off of here. Uh, I've shared with you. Uh, hopefully you can take something to do with it. I'm probably going to come back in a little bit. I'm getting ready to get on with a client. Um, and then I'll take it from there. Um, on that note, I wish you the best. That's, that, that's where I'm going to leave it at. I wish you the best. Um, don't forget to support the work we're doing. If you believe in the work that I've done for, 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 for years, I've been researching and writing and doing what I've done for 30 years. I've uh, done programs. I work with kids now. I take on all kind of stuff. I've got people now got me looking for houses. Uh, and, and, and I don't have a problem. I'm not complaining. It's my passion. But I do the work. This is I'm not just somebody that jumped on here. I've been, number one, I've been online doing what I do for 12, 13 years, but I didn't just jump on then. I have been working. I have been uh, a person that was determined to be a part of the solution. So again, I'm asking you to show some love, show some support, uh, give us a fighting chance. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.